the moment, on Itaro, I'm looking at these things. I'll start going over these guys um, and, and reviewing them and see which ones, which ones to pick. Any other suggestions, please let me know. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. See you. That sounded like a great video there, Tom. Thank you very much, man. It's nice to be making them again. Honestly, it just feels good. Good to be back. You haven't been, uh, you, haven't, you haven't seen the, uh, the markets this month, have you? No, not really. I, I haven't had time. You know, I've been doing, been doing this and all sorts of stuff. I'm telling you, it's been a huge July. It's been enormous, Tom. Really? Really? You don't think maybe you set those stop losses a little bit tight? Locked in the losses a little bit too soon? Listen, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? I'm not gonna draw it out. You gotta make a decision. You gotta stick with that decision. How's Jay been doing? I haven't got a clue. Honestly, not a clue. Haven't been watching. Don't know. Hope he's doing well. Yeah, really? You haven't, you haven't, uh, you haven't sneaked a peek there, Tom? What do you think I'm doing? You think I'm just hanging around watching if Jay's doing uh, well or not? Yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough spot to be in, you know? You made a call, you know? How insecure do you think I am? What do you think I'm, I'm hoping that the entire world economy collapses and crashes, that Jay, you know, doesn't do extraordinarily well, you know, just, just so I don't uh, look like a bit of an idiot. How insecure do you think I am? Heaven forbid, Tom. Heaven forbid. You're watching him right now, aren't you? <gasps> What's he on? 17%. 17%. Woohoo! Ooh, hey! Ah! It's ah. a lot of money. <laughs> Woo! Good lord, Jay, well done. God, that's got a sting. I, that's got a sting, Tom. 17%, man. 17% for the month. Dude, what am I gonna do? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not the pro. Hey, I'm just here reading a paper. I'm not a pro. I'm not a YouTuber. Hey! Okay, so yesterday I was walking around in a place called Bajiba. The reason I wanted to make this video is because yesterday I was walking around in Bajiba, other end of the island, just walking around, doing my thing, but I realized that in my thoughts, I was literally hoping the whole financial system collapses just so that my statistics look better. Just so that it looks like I did the right thing by setting tight copy stop losses on Jay. Sorry, Jay, if you're watching this. You know I don't uh, wish you bad. I wish you all the success in the world, but your July stat is making me look bad, Jay. So I did realize that yesterday. I thought, man, I've got to put this in the video because this is ridiculous, you know. Now, just to carry on with some of the sort of awkward situations that have arisen recently, someone left a comment after my last video where it was, I was talking about dividend-focused investing, moving away from growth equities. Someone pointed out this guy, Andre G, big YouTuber, just kind of made his fame and his notoriety and his whole channel on really investing in dividends, reinvesting in dividends, and talking about the merits of that. So yeah, his channel looks great, loads of subscribers. I thought, all right, let's have a look at one of his videos. First one I watch is this one. Uh, I quit dividend investing. Because growth investing or index investing in the overall broad market has almost always beat dividend investing. And it's hard to admit. I can't, you know, what am I meant to do there? But he did talk about how if the interest rates uh, are raised, which they are now, that video was made a year ago. He said if the interest rates raised, then it probably, you know, growth equities wouldn't do so well and uh, that he'd be back into dividend focused stuff. But it was just a shocker. Everyone else seems to have rotated out of growth equities into dividends like a year ago. Like I'm a year late to this party, but it's all right. I'm still just learning. There's just so much to learn, right? There's so much new stuff all the time. I'm like, huh, huh, constantly surprised. The other one was Brent Johnson, runs a company called Santiago Capital Investment Firm. Really smart guy, been listening to him for, for kind of years. He's got this theory called the dollar milkshake theory about how the, the US dollar is gonna strengthen and gold's gonna strengthen in the end, but everything, you know. And talking about potential collapses and all the rest of it, how to guard yourself. In his latest video, which I watched just after I made the last one, he says this. I think people should own big blue chip US equities. Big blue chip equities, gold and land or, and cash, I think, I think I would go to war with those four assets. So my whole idea at the moment, you know, I'd set these tight copy stop losses and I thought the market was going down like 80%, like we've got proper depression coming. I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of what I've been thinking. So I thought, let the stop losses trigger, it goes down and then I can buy back in when the market's at the bottom, I can buy back lower. And I'll show you why I did that in a bit or why I'm thinking that. And he seems to be saying, no, these are the four asset classes I'd be happy to take into the war. You know, the difficult situation, any sort of bear market or horrible downturn. 
He seems to be saying that it hold them in it. And I know a lot of you, a lot of other people have been saying that. But it kind of threw me to hear him saying that. I'm like, what, Brent? Okay, because that's like, you know, I've set my stop losses really tight and that's it. I'm mostly in cash. So I can't know Brent saying it too. So I'm also in a weird situation with cryptos where it's sort of either way I act, I think I've done the wrong thing. There's this real kind of dual personality thing I have going on. We're with the cryptos. Last year, everything was going through the roof. I'm making videos. All these coins, which they're all going to the moon. There's profits everywhere. Did I take profits? No, I did not. I think the people who are able, who know when to take profits, it's an almost supernatural ability to know when to take those profits, when a lot of money's been made, to not be greedy, take some of the profits, take some money out, so that's kind of secure. I didn't. I'm holding all my cryptos. I'm holding all my NFTs. So on the one hand with cryptos, I will hold through thick and thin. Market's going up, market's going down, I'm holding. But then with uh, eToro, I'm actually setting these tight copy stop losses. I'm sort of over cautious. I won't let the market's downturn at all. I want to get out of it. I'll show you why I'm like that a bit. I know it's, you know, I may be completely wrong, but I'll show you why I'm like that on eToro. So here's my um, statistics and we can see going back to 2016. Now this one here, 2016, minus 40%, I'm going to disregard this minus 38% as I've said before, me gambling with highly leveraged gold trades, like first thing in the morning. I've talked about that one before. Ridiculous. Here, look, here's, here's the story as told in another video. So in 2016, I'd just joined the site. I knew nothing about trading, nothing about investing. I wanted to get rich. I wanted to make some quick money and I didn't have much money, all right? So here's what had happened. I wake up in the morning. First thing in the morning, I'm barely awake. So I'd wake up, eyes still red, not even like awake in the morning. I've been up two minutes. Grab my laptop, which would be on the bed because I've been up looking at stocks really late at night. And the first thing I'd do, I'd flip open the laptop and I'd go to the gold page because I knew about gold. I didn't, I, I'd heard of gold and boom, I go to open a trade. Now when, when I was new, obviously I didn't have a lot of money. I, I wanted to make the most of the money I had. In order to do that, there was this thing called leverage. I'd never heard of that before. What I did know is that it made your trade sizes much bigger. So it's like, wow, it's like magic money. Like, this is amazing. Like if, I, if I'm gonna win at this speed, I can now win at this speed, you know. I can also lose at that speed, much more importantly. Times 10 leverage. Now at the time you could use, I think you could use even more. I think they've lowered it to times 10 now. I think there were, there were more. I'm not, I can't remember. I know they lowered the leverage on everything, but I was using like a lot of leverage. Now, what happens with leverage is that it, if you, when you lose money, you can lose money so quickly that the fear kicks in. When the fear kicks in, you make bad decisions. Those bad decisions statistically mean you're going to lose money. You'll close trades too early, close them a loss. This is what happened. I'd open a trade, it'd start going down, because I'm using a lot of leverage, it's dropping far quicker than I can afford. You know, the trade's been open four minutes and I've lost $10. And I'm thinking, all right, another four minutes, I may have lost another $10. All I can see is that I'm losing money, I'm losing money quickly, I think I've made a mistake, I'm new, I don't know what I'm doing. Boom, I close the trade. I close the trade, I'm now minus $10. And then I see gold going up again. I'm thinking, whoa, I leave it going up because I think it's going to go down. I think it's not going down. It seems to keep going up. I'll open another trade. I'd invariably open it right at the top. It starts going down again. Same thing. I'm losing money. I'm panicking. The panic kicks in. I close the trade. I close the trade at another $10 loss. This happened so many times. And I've literally, I've just woke up. I think in the second month of my trading, I lost like 38%. That's my, my bit of experience. If I can pass anything on to you, it's how quickly you can lose money trying to trade gold or anything with a, a, a mixture of inexperience, too much leverage and possibly tiredness or not really being conscious. It's ridiculous. It's just gambling, you know. So that's why there's the 38.14. So I'm just going to, I'm going to move the screen up. It, boop, that's gone. So we started 2017 and look, I'm making nice profits in 2017. That's also just luck. That was me gambling. Look, I'll look at this one. This is me 65% in August. So I was just gambling heavily and I happened to win. Like luck that year. That was cryptos, by the way. That was, I think that was cryptos booming in the beginning, I believe, I'm not sure. So that was that, 63.52%. And then the next year, uh, so it ended up with 38%. It was luck, complete luck. Makes me look good, but it's luck. The next year, minus 23.81%. This one is where there was a bear market and I was copying people and I just held. To be serious, 
People say, well, why don't you just hold? It'll eventually reverse. Because this year I was holding on to people. I, I extended my copy stop losses. You know, the copies should have triggered my copy stop loss. And I set my copy stop loss wider and wider and wider down to like sort of 40% and 45% and 50%. I can't remember where it was, but I set it really wide. I also had some manual trades open and I extended my stop losses on those manual trades, believing it was going to turn around and I was in the right stock and it was just about to turn around. And so I had this really bad experience in 2018 of not closing things, of not letting things hit stop loss in manual trades and in copies. And by the time the year came to the end, I did sort of think I should have just let my stop losses trigger. I should have just left it. Let the, the manual trades, let the stop losses trigger. I could have bought it again now when the stock's much cheaper because it just kept going down and I could have owned much more of the stock. Or with the copy, I could have just let the copy stop loss trigger. That person kept drawing down very slowly, but for a whole year they drew down very slowly. And this was a great trader. I could have just let the copy stop loss trigger and then when it seemed they were turning around again at the bottom, I could have just copied them again. And I would have been, you know, I would have had the benefit of all their time until now and I would have made more money. But it's hard to time it as well, you know. If you do let them trigger, when do you buy back in? Yeah, that's where I am now. All right, my, my copy stop losses have triggered. My stop loss is all over the place triggered. I've got all my available funds in my portfolio. Do I buy back in now? Because it's always the same problem, isn't it? Do I buy back in now or is this what they call a bull trap? A bull trap is when the markets are going down, then they go up again. And it might be that they don't go up for good. They're going to go down again. But this little bit here, everyone starts to think possibly. I'm not saying this is what it is, but people can start to think, all right, the markets have turned again. It's time to buy back in. And they, they're the bulls. You see bull market going up, bear market going down. So a bull trap is where it's overall the market is going down, but there's these little upticks and people buy in thinking, right, this is it. There's a reversal. Things are going up and then it goes down again. So if you're a bull, you get trapped and you start making all these losses. Is this a bull trap or has the market turned around? In the future, we'll look back on this with 2020 hindsight. Everything will look clear. And if we made the right decision, we'll say that's oh, because I knew, because I'm a genius. And people who make the wrong decision will hide it, cover it up, go away quietly. But we don't know. You know, there's probabilities. It might be that it's reversed and it's going to go back up. It might be that this is a little bull trap and it's going to go down. I don't know. Only the future will make us kind of look like geniuses. Unless someone's consistently right for many years, then they're probably a genius. But that's where I am now. Do I use my available balance? Is this the bottom? How do we time the bottom? I don't know. So, um... This is what's happening. I'm going to look at the blue chip stocks and whether I should just you know, get into the blue chip stocks. Should I have some growth stocks? So I don't know. Another thing he talked about, super smart, which I've become very aware of, is, is tax. How do your investments uh, affect your tax situation? All of the people who seem to be very good at wealth management, really managing their money, really managing their overall life, they have to take tax into consideration. Where do you live? What's the tax regime? What's a taxable event? They use different savings account. They declare things in specific ways. They learn about tax and tax situations as much as they're studying investing. They see the tax stuff as part of that. And that's something I'm, I'm studying as well. I am learning. I am learning what a taxable event is and how best to structure that. These are the things. I know that's boring and it's very dull, but it's actually the clever people are looking at these things. So I'm looking at these things now. Um, and no, I didn't. I, I am still holding my, my cryptos. I didn't take the profits, as I was saying before. You know, it's a genius. The geniuses know how to take profits. I didn't. I'm just still holding them. Um, NFTs, I've still got the NFTs. NFT market's down. I'm still holding them. I'm still holding all of them. But yes, some of my decisions, I'm on the back foot and I don't know what to do at all. But I'm looking at it all. I wanted to put this video out because I realized that yesterday... Um, it's very difficult, especially because this is public, because I have a channel, when there's obviously, you know, the people I'm suggesting to listen to, have a look at this guy, are saying the opposite from what I'm saying, and they, they've done better than me. So it's, it's difficult being in public. I always want to make the right decision. I don't know what it is. Um, but I'm going to keep looking, and, and hopefully some of you who don't know what to do either, you're not alone. You're not alone. I'm going to look at those guys on my watch list. Uh, I think, you know, I'll take a bit of a mix of everyone, and we'll see how it goes. That's it for now. Nice talking to you. And Jay, I hope you do really well. I hope everyone does super well. All right. And me. Let's all do well. Better attitude. All right. See you guys. Bye.